Welcome back to Cecilia Lee Jenkins. This book is a classic. We are moving on to chapter one and it's called Even Squished Oranges Are Lucky. My favorite story started last weekend on one of my favorite holidays of all time, Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year is all about traditions like eating delicious food, spending time with your family, and eating... <coughs> Chapter 1. Even Squished Oranges Are Lucky My story starts last weekend on one of my favorite holidays of all time, Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year is all about traditions, like eating delicious food, spending time with your family, and getting red and gold envelopes from grown-ups with money inside. But most important of all, it's about traditions that bring you luck for the next year. Which is why on the morning of Chinese New Year, I had a lot to do especially because that day Auntie Ava was coming to visit. Sunyi Falu, Sunyi Falu, I yelled as I danced around the house, helping my mom get ready for Auntie Ava's visit. That means Happy New Year, I shouted as I skipped by Gwendolyn's high chair. It was her first Chinese New Year, so I knew it was my job to show her that it's the best holiday ever. I'd been practicing my pronunciation with my nene because I wanted everything to be perfect. And even though my mom said that wasn't anything for me to do, I was a big help anyway. I ran around and only sometimes bumped into her to make sure that they were following as many traditions as possible to get as much luck as possible. First, I got dressed in red clothes, which is very lucky. I wanted to wear my shimong, which is a beautiful Chinese dress. Mine is red and gold with pretty buttons at the neck, but my mom said no because it was cold. I was disappointed, but then I realized I could get even more lucky by wearing every piece of red clothing I owned. And I looked great in my red pants. Red dress, red polka dot skirt over that, red sweater, red t-shirt, red headband, and red galoshes with ladybugs on them. Plus, I was definitely warm enough, so even though mom sighed when she saw me, she didn't make me change. Then I made sure to find all of Gwendolyn's red clothes because I'm a good big sister that way. You're going to love today, I told her as I helped her to her red striped pajamas, red socks, a red t-shirt, a red sweater, and a sparkly red tutu. We're going to Chinatown and there's going to be a parade and dragons and the best food. Bah! Gwen said, clapping her hands, which meant she was definitely excited about it all, especially the excellent good luck outfit I'd find for her. And she loved it when, as a finishing touch, I found a red scrunchie for her favorite toy, which is an old Batman doll that my dad used to keep in a study, because even superheroes need luck. For my next job, I grabbed all the oranges from the kitchen and set out to put them all over the house. Oranges also bring luck on Chinese New Year, which makes sense because they're delicious. Nene usually keeps her oranges in a bowl on the dining room table, but I wanted to spread our luck everywhere. So I put one orange in the silverware drawer, one on top of the TV, two in the bathroom sink, one on Auntie Ava's pillow, two underneath my parents' pillow as a surprise for later, one in Gwendolyn's toy box, one in her sock drawer, and one on my mom's desk. I was just about to ask if we could go to the store to get more oranges when I heard the doorbell. Who are you? My dad yelled out in his I'm joking voice. So I ran to the door yelling, Auntie Ava! Celia! Auntie Ava picked me up and spun me around. Ava, my mom said, coming to join in our hug. Ba, ba, ga! Gwendolyn also threw her arms off for a hug, beaming. And then my dad joined in too. Because everyone loves when Auntie Ava comes to stay. Auntie Ava is my dad's younger sister. She's great at drawing. She's amazing at playing finger puppets. And she's a big fan of Selena Moon, which is my favorite book series and possibly the best series of all time. Sometimes we don't see her for a while because Auntie Ava travels a lot for her job. She's been all over the world. But she always thinks of us no matter where she goes. And she sends me pictures of the zoo or aquariums or museums she gets to visit on her trip. And whenever Auntie Ava's here, she always sits with me before bed and braids my hair while we talk. It's our special tradition. 
when Auntie Ava visits, she stays in my room and my dad makes me a mini tent in the living room. So after hugging, there are lots of bringing suitcases upstairs and rushing to pick up the clothes I accidentally maybe thrown all over when I was looking for red things. By the time everything was away and clean, my mom looked at her watch and said, wait, what time is the parade? So then there was an even more rushing and running, but finally we piled into the car and sped off to celebrate Chinese New Year. Chinatown was beautiful and more crowded than I've ever seen. Red and gold streamers dangled from windows and in between buildings and all around. Carts sold hot food and pastries and the air was filled with happy voices and good smells. Above us, flags with pictures of dogs hung from the streets because this is the year of the dog. Everyone is born into an animal year and some of them are really exciting like the year of the dragon and the year of the rat, which I used to be unhappy about because rats are gross. But then Nene told me that the year of the rat means I'm creative and smart, which is good news for my writing, so I felt better. Plus, I like mice, which are almost like rats, and I love cheese, so it all works out. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed chapter one. We're going to go ahead and split this chapter up into two parts since it's a bit long. So if you are ready for part two, go ahead and click back to the click sheet and then find the little book icon for part two. All right, guys, happy reading.